Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. If you recall from the last tutorial, we set up this convoluted system called Entity Component System, which I keep saying will make our lives easier and hopefully we'll begin to see that in the next few tutorials. Uh, what this did, we just basically got to a point where uh, we have this box component attached to a game object and we can call different methods and attributes on that component just by saying get the component off of it and we give it a class name and then it finds the first type and returns that component. If you haven't watched that, you should definitely check that out. In this tutorial, what we're going to be going over is something that I am calling an asset pool. And this is basically in a game, you're going to have a lot of different assets. So pictures, sound files, all that different type of stuff. Um, what you don't want to do is you don't want to accidentally load one of those assets twice because then you're loading double the amount of memory and it can quickly run out of hand. I had this with a project that I made actually in Java a while back where there was a memory leak. And so as the game was left running longer and longer, you actually, it got really, really slow because it was just constantly reloading these assets when it really didn't need to be. So this is something that we will use every time we want to get an asset, which will just protect us from accidentally loading one twice and it should just give us one whenever we give it the name of a file and it will just find it for us automatically and we don't have to worry about loading it again or anything like that. So let's get to this. Before we do, I'm going to just draw it out a little bit more so that we can really understand what this asset pool will be doing. What is an asset pool? Well, very simply, it's a pool of assets. So this is a picture, this is a picture, this is a picture. What do we want to get from this? What we want is we want to be able to say um something like asset pool dot load and we give it some file so like say it's a picture pick one dot png and then we want it to go into here and look for that picture one if it finds it then it returns it for us it loads it but if we say something like asset pool dot load pick 5.png if we give it something like this and it goes and looks for it inside this pool and does not find it it goes to the root directory of our uh, game so like we would have some assets folder here and it will go into here um, and look through all the files and see if it can find this picture and then if it does it will load it and prepare it for us and then it will return it and then it will add it to this pool and that way next time we say asset pool dot load it will find it in here and return it from memory instead of reloading it one more time we'll implement it using a hash map and that should be good enough for our purposes we'll just have a hash map of a string to an object which represents the picture in memory for an asset pool we need some sort of asset so <laughs> let's create this thing called a sprite and this is just going to be an image for now uh, we'll just call it sprite and it's just going to be this empty class that extends component because it will of course be a component that we can add to any game object so we'll do that real quick and then let's create another class inside of data structures and we will call this asset pool this will be a completely static class because everything is going to you should be able to call this from anywhere in your program and it should be fine so We'll create this thing called a static map from a string to a sprite. And this will be our sprites. And we'll say this is a new hash map. And this will be our container for all of those assets that we will be containing. And then you just hit Alt Enter to import all of those. Then we're going to want a couple of methods. We're going to want a public static method called sprite has sprite. And this will return whether or not this asset pool currently has the sprite to this picture file. So we're just going to assume that we're, we have all pictures for now. Uh, we will get to sounds and stuff later on, and we'll deal with that when we come across that. So all we do is we're going to say return asset pool dot sprites dot has or dot contains picture file. And this is a built-in method to the Java and uh, Java hash map. And it just returns true or false, whether or not it has that. And I said sprite, this should be a Boolean value. It's returning whether or not we have this sprite. Then we're going to want a public static sprite get sprite. And you're going to pass in a picture file for this one as well. And then basically what we're going to do is we're going to say if 
the asset pool dot has the sprite picture file. Then we will return asset pool dot sprites dot get, and then we'll say picture file. And the reason we wrap it in this if statement and we check beforehand is because Java will throw an exception if you try and get it and it doesn't exist. I believe I might be wrong about that. They may have changed that, but then we'll say return null if it doesn't have the sprite. And then let's add one more method so that we can actually add sprites to this. Uh, we'll say public static void add sprite. And then we'll say string picture file. And that should be good for us. This is going to be a little bit more complicated because this actually goes into loading a sprite and everything. So we're going to have to go into our sprite class and actually extend this just a little bit more. Inside of our sprite class, we will create a constructor method called public sprite. And this will take in, you guessed it, a picture file. And this is basically going to do the whole uh, process of loading in this picture and everything. So we will say, uh, first of all, let's have a string up here called picture file. And this is just going to be the uh, just inherent inside of this, just in case we need to get this and find the picture file from another object. So we'll say this dot picture file equals picture file. Then we will add a couple more things up here that will make our lives a little bit easier. We'll say public int width and height. And we can actually get these from Java's built-in methods once we load this picture into memory. Uh, we're going to need one more method or one more variable up here. We'll call this a public buffered image, and this will be our uh, image. So this is going to be the actual image contained at this picture. And then inside of here, we'll have a try catch because every time you open a file in Java, you need a try catch, and this will catch an I/O exception with a lowercase c. I/O exception e, and if it fails in opening this file, we do want to just print the stack trace and then exit just like we did with the last thing. Okay, and IO exception is never thrown in corresponding blocks. So let's make it so that it can throw this try catch block. Okay, and we'll say, first of all, this dot image equals image IO dot read. And then we'll say a new file and we'll pass in the picture file. And let's hit Alt Enter, Alt Enter to get that. And let's actually, uh, first I'm gonna take out this file because it'll make it a little bit easier to get the absolute path, which will be important. So we'll say new file, picture file, and then we'll replace this with file. And these are just built-in Java methods to open and read a picture. And then it just stores the data of the picture inside of this image. And what we're gonna do is we're actually going to say asset pool dot add sprite. And we will say, the file dot get absolute path. This way, whenever we're checking inside of our asset pool, let's go back to that. Um, we should definitely check and see if it has this picture file, but every time we are doing this, we should say, let's go file, file equals a new file, and we get the file. And then we'll say asset pool dot sprites dot get picture file dot get absolute path or dot absolute path. And then we'll say picture file dot get absolute path dot to string. Oh, and this shouldn't be picture file. This should be file. There we go. And so this way we're just checking uh, the absolute path. That way it will be the same for sure every time because somebody could pass in something like assets slash pick dot PNG, or they could just pass in pick dot PNG. And we want to make sure that it always returns the same one, no matter which path they send in. Okay, and then right here in add sprite, we will take in a picture file and then we will take in a sprite, sprite, and this will be the sprite object. And then we'll simply say, if not asset pool dot has sprite, and then we'll say this uh, sprite or this picture file. And we actually want to, and this should be the absolute path. So we're gonna put in here just that we know picture file, the absolute path to the picture. And just in case we forget that in the future, it's probably going to be a good idea just to do this. And we will say, if it does not have the sprite for the file dot get absolute path, then we will say asset pool 
dot sprites dot put and then we'll put the absolute path so file dot get absolute path dot to string and we'll put the sprite there so we will just add this to our pool of assets okay if we already did have the asset what we want to do is we want to throw a new exception so what i'm going to do is just say system dot out dot print line and then we will say uh, asset pool already has asset and then we'll do a colon and we'll say plus and then we'll give it the file dot get absolute path okay and then what we'll do is we'll say system dot exit minus one uh, the reason I'm not throwing an error here is just because then we would have to throw every call to this inside of a try catch which is a little bit annoying so we'll just say system dot print line we already have this asset and then we'll just exit completely from the whole system okay let's try and actually test this out now it's a little bit complicated let's just make sure so we have an error here it says it's expecting a sprite too so we will say and we will pass this in which means this sprite okay and then we should be able to get this image and everything from here so let's go into our level editor scene and then let's say test obj dot add component and then we will say say asset pool dot get sprite and then we'll say assets slash uh, pick dot png which we will be adding in just a second and this should return a sprite object and let's go back into here and since it's not in there already what it should do is if it does not have it we will say else asset pool dot add sprite and then we'll say the picture file and we'll actually say sprite sprite equals a new sprite and then we will pass in the picture file and then we will say asset pool dot add sprite the picture file and this sprite and let's go back into our sprite because i do think that we actually added it in here and this is probably not a good idea we should leave all of this up to the asset pool itself so just make it a little bit easier so we just say file equals new file and then we read the file and then the asset pool so this way we should never create a sprite we should never be in charge of that we should always go through asset pool to get all of our assets and let it handle the creation and destruction of these objects just so that we don't actually duplicate an object okay and then we can create one more boundary just in case we'll say if asset pool dot has sprite and then we'll give it this picture file then we will say throw new io exception we'll just say an exception um asset already exists plus and then we'll say the picture file and then right here we'll just say exception and that way if we try and create a sprite manually then it will yell at us because that sprite may already exist so let's just try and use this see if it works and the reason that i'm kind of all over the place with this too is because i'm referencing my older code but i am making a little bit of changes because some of the things i did weren't the best uh right down here too real quick we're gonna say this dot width equals image dot get width and this dot height equals image dot get height that way we have the width and the height okay let's go back to a level editor scene and we say add this asset so then it creates the newest new asset and adds it to our asset pool and then inside of our game object um, we actually want a draw method as well so we'll say public void draw and it will take in a graphics 2d object we'll import that real quick we'll say for component c in components we will say c.draw g2 this will just be used to draw every single one of the uh, game objects and basically it will only be drawn if one of these components has something to draw so like a sprite object which clearly should be drawing the sprite that it holds okay so let's go back to our level editor scene and then inside of our draw method we will say g2 or we'll say test obj dot draw g2 and so this should pass in the graphics handle to that object and then it should draw 
view object to the screen. And then let's go into our sprite component and we'll say at override public void draw graphics 2D G2. To draw this, it's very simple. We just say G2 dot draw image and it takes in a, a buffered image or an image, which we have. So we'll say image and then it takes in a X, a Y and an image observer and a width and a height. So X, Y, we'll just say that for now because we're going to need to get those somehow. And we'll say null. How do we get X, Y? Well, we know that this component should be attached to an object, right? A game object. And we know that every game object is built with a transform attached to it. So should every component have a reference to who owns it? And I think the answer to that is yes. If you've ever programmed in Unity, then you know that uh, they all have this sort of similar thing where you can say, uh, get this component, and then you say component, dot, and then you just say this dot game object, and it knows what it's talking about. It knows which game object it's attached to. We'll do the same thing. So inside of our component, we'll have a public game object, game object. We'll actually make this protected because this should only be accessed from within the component itself. And then this just means that every game object or every component is created with a game object. And how do we get this reference to this game object? Well, we know that the only way you can add a component is through a game object. And clearly, if you're adding a component to a game object, you want that component to be attached to this game object. So then we'll just say components.addc and we'll say c.gameObject equals this. And then that does mean that we'll have to make it not protected. This will have to be public. And so then we can uh, get reference to this game object through the component. So then if we go back into our sprite, we can say game object dot transform dot position dot X. I'm going to move this to the next line. And we'll say game object dot transform dot position dot Y, just like you would in Unity. And it's going to give us a error because these are not integers. So we'll just cast these two integers. And this should draw whatever object is there. Now we're going to get an IO exception because we don't have that asset located right now. So if I run this, uh, we get an exception, can't read input file. And it's going to say Java 27 right here when we're trying to read this file because it does not exist. So let's go and add this asset real quick to our folder. If we go to local disk C, dev, Java projects, and then mine is under geometry dash, I'm going to create a new folder up here. Uh, we'll just go control shift N and then call this assets. And then inside of here, I'm just going to drag some random picture just to test with. And the picture I'm going to drag into this is actually going to be from the actual uh, geometry dash game that we'll be making. So this is just one of the assets that we'll be using for drawing the player looks like this. And then let's rename this to, I think we called it pick.png. And then I'll minimize that real quick. We'll go back to our level editor scene. Make sure we're looking up yep, asset slash pick.png. And then we hit shift F10 and we get another error. And so this one is saying we're getting a null pointer exception. So if we go game object add and it's saying it's right here, uh, asset pool .get sprite. So we're getting a null pointer whenever we say get sprite. So let's go to our asset pool. We never return it. So we should say return asset pool dot get sprite and then we'll say the picture file so after we add it if it doesn't exist already we will return it so let's run this one more time and fingers crossed it will already work and it's going to say asset pool already has the asset so what's going on here and so the problem with there was i was just saying uh asset pool dot get sprite which is actually this function that we're creating right now when it should have been asset pool dot sprites dot get sprite dot get and i said file dot get absolute path and then I just copied this guy right here. We should actually just move this here. And then we'll take out this and take out this. And that way we just get the correct sprite. And if we run this, then we get the picture drawn right up at the top left hand corner of the screen, which is great. And then if we go into our level editor scene, and if we change the position of this game object, it should change the position on the screen as well. So if we make this 100, uh, 300, and then run this one more time. Then you notice that's down here now. So this is great. So this is one game object with a sprite component that we are updating every frame and we are drawing every frame and it is drawing the sprite component that is attached 
to it. If any of these concepts seem confusing or I went through something a little bit too fast, please leave a comment and I will post a follow-up video explaining these in a little bit more detail. But that should wrap it up for creating our asset pool and our sprite. And we're sort of in a good place to almost, almost start creating our geometry dash game and creating some level editor things and stuff like that. So in the next tutorial, what I'll probably go over is sprite sheets and how to load in several sprites in one sprite sheet and then how we can then get a individual sprite out of that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Thanks. See you.